Hello, I'm Richard Hobbs. I'm the Western Curator of Roman Britain and welcome to my corner. So today I'm going to talk about uh, this rather wonderful object called a Tantalus cup. So what exactly is a Tantalus cup? Well, firstly, it's not always known as that. There are three names that we can know these things by. Tantalus cup, greedy cup, or a Pythagoras cup. What the connection with Pythagoras is, I, I, I've not been able to work out. Um, this is something that's actually described in the ancient sources. So someone called Hero of Alexandria, who's writing in the first century, describes a, uh, a type of vessel where you pour liquid in, and after a certain point, it starts flowing out the bottom. I apologize for the noise. Uh, we've got building works going on all around us at the moment, which is very annoying, but there we go. Um, so you can buy these things on the internet. So this is an example of a, of a Tantalus cup, which I, which I bought. Um, it's a modern replica. Um, and as you can see, it's got this kind of column in the center. It's got holes actually here, which you can't see. Uh, importantly, it's got a hole in the base. Um, so when you pour liquid into this, um, after a certain point, the liquid will start to flow out the bottom. So it's just as the ancient sources are describing, but none had ever actually been found from the ancient world. There was no obvious example, and I've done a lot of research on this and can't seem to find anything. However, back in 2012, this hoard of Roman silver was discovered in Croatia while they were trying to uh, building a new clothing store right in the center of town, and they found this hoard. Um, often, it's, as is often the case when you find hoards of silver, uh, it tends to come in lots of bits and pieces. Some items will be complete, some won't be so complete, and so on. I had a very excited call from my colleague in Croatia, uh, um, Hovoye Vulik, who's the local museum curator in Vinkovci, to say that he had this, he had this, what he thought was this most amazing object, um, but it was in bits. But he'd started to put those bits together. We have a hemispherical bowl, that's one element of this thing. It has what's called a foot ring, so it has a circular piece of metal allowing you to sit the vessel down on a flat surface. It had a figure seated on what was basically like a rock, which sat in the middle of the bowl. Um, and it had another disc, which sat on the bottom of the vessel like this with holes in it. And crucially, it had this kind of metal tube which sat underneath. So we were pretty certain that we had for the first time, one of these Tantalus cups. Absolutely amazing discovery. But the real clincher was when we did an x-ray of this object. So the, uh, the object was x-rayed. Around the edge, they found that there was these depictions of various marine creatures, uh, mythical beasts and so on, but it had a Latin inscription. Um, and that is basically the following. When Tantalus is athirst, standing in the midst of a river, the greedy are described as those whom an availability of good things flows around, but they are unable to touch any of them. So this was amazing. We had, in the form of these different elements, we had what looked like uh, a so-called Tantalus cup, the thing that we knew from the ancient sources. Tantalus is where we get the words tantalizing from. Um, Tantalus was someone who upset the gods. He was sent to Tartarus, which is the ancient Greek name for the underworld. And he was forced to spend eternity standing up to his neck in water. Um, every time he, he tried to reach down to drink, the water would recede away from him. Um, and above him were these lovely fruits. Every time he tried to reach up to them, they would get blown away. So that was how he, he was condemned to spend eternity. So we asked uh, a potter who makes uh, Roman style and other ancient pottery, a chap called Graham Taylor from uh, Potted Histories to make a replica for us. Despite appearances, this is made of ceramic. I know it looks like it's made of silver, but it's not. Um, and in fact, you can see here that it's ceramic. It's got that nice buff color that you get from, from clay when it's fired. Um, and it's been coated in, in a silver coating because the original vessel would have been bright silver. So it's a hemispherical bowl, which means it's like kind of like half a, half a sphere. Um, looking at the bottom, you have the foot ring with this lovely open work on it. You have your uh, 
base plate with an inscription running around it, which is referring to Antoninus, the maker, um, Aquileia, the place where it's been made, and it's got these holes in it. Inside, we have the inscription running around here, and this area there would have been, or there are on the original, the uh, various uh, marine scenes. And then in the center, the kind of like pièce de résistance, if you like, is your figure of Tantalus uh, seated on a rock. And importantly, he's reaching down to the water to try to get to it. The important thing, though, is that what we really wanted to test was whether this was a siphon. Because the way that a Tantalus cup works is that it has to be a siphon. What is a siphon? Well, a siphon is a, a, is a vessel where when you fill up to a certain point, uh, it will start to uh, disappear through the bottom of the vessel, but it won't stop once it starts. That's the important thing. Because of the uh, to do with differences in air pressure, once water starts flowing out the base or any sort of liquid that's in the vessel, it will carry on. And that's the crucial thing that we wanted to test. Because of course, uh, the idea then is uh, it matches entirely the idea of tant Tantalus reaching down, never being able to get to liquid because it always, always flows away from him. It's always flowing away and disappearing, meaning he's, the poor chap is unable to drink. So one could imagine in the context of a, of a Roman dinner party uh, where there would have been eating of fine foods, um, lots of drinking, entertainment, dancing, carousing, all those types of things that you can imagine. Um, you can imagine um, this uh, being given to a guest who in play. Uh, perhaps is fond of a drink. In vino veritas. Mm. And the guest would be saying, more, more, give me more wine. Pace aqua! Demerum! 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 <laughs> ah, Demerum. The servant will be pouring in the wine, mm -hmm. and at some point, of course, the inevitable happens and covers them ah. in wine. <laughs> <laughs> to some extent, we can think of this as a bit like a trick vessel, perhaps used to, you know, get a laugh around the, uh, the dinner table. But also, there's another element to this, is that um, this isn't the first object where we're sometimes reminded of what can happen with excess drinking. The main reason I got involved in the first place was I was working on this lovely set of Roman silver that we have in the museum called the Mildenhall Treasure. The Mildenhall Treasure has a center, the so-called Bacchic Platter, and uh, that in itself has got two figures, Bacchus and Hercules, and they are involved in a drinking contest. And Hercules, of course, is your demigod, your, your he-man, your muscular man, who, of course, should be able to hold his drink, but he can't. And he's shown collapsing, drunk, having to be supported by two satyrs, the uh, helpers of Bacchus, the god of wine. So the moral of that story, of course, is that even Hercules is unable to hold his drink if he is unwise enough to get himself into a, a drinking contest with the god of wine, Bacchus. So in lots of these hordes of silver that are used in these dinner parties, we often find these kind of moralistic things going on. Say, so be a bit careful here. You're having fun, you're getting carried away, you're enjoying yourself, nothing wrong with that, but don't go to excess. And so perhaps the Tantalus cup is that kind of thing happening. It's saying, you know, be a bit careful because uh, you might want more, but at some times that uh, sometimes you're, that's going to cause you to get covered in wine. It's going to be a bad thing. Thanks for listening. Um, there are, if you want more information, there are some links below, including to Graham Taylor's video on Potted Histories um, on YouTube of him making the replicas of the Tantalus Cup. Um, there are also others, Curator's Corners, that I can recommend. And you might also like to subscribe to the British Museum channel as well.